Boketov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. This morning, uh, we're getting information coming out from Russia's foreign ministry. Uh, Sergey Lavrov has stated that Russia will respond if the U.S. strikes Syria. Fox News, as we know, reported and other news agencies have reported that Mr. Trump stands firm on Syria and avoid, uh, wants to avoid a military conflict with Russia. But he's not going to be able to stand very firm with uh, Syria if he's worried about dealing with Russia because Russia finally has stepped up to the plate and made it quite clear that they are going to respond. As we know that uh, the United States has threatened Syria, said that they knew that they were preparing for a chemical weapons attack, which uh, providing no evidence whatsoever that there is a, an imminent attack, uh, which only suggests that this was just something to justify an, a, a launch on Damascus, an attack on Damascus, which we do believe is something that will come to pass. It's something that obviously the U.S. coalition has been working on for some time, and that is a plan to take down Damascus uh, in the very near future. We see Turkey also moving in their uh, military equipment, ready for a huge offensive up near Aleppo. We see the Germans, uh, the Dutch, uh, we see the Norwegian Special Forces, British Forces, U.S. Forces, Free Syrian Army, Jordanian Forces, the Saudis. All of these nations have come together ready to take down Damascus at their own bidding. But it's not going to be without a fight. And uh, we found this out uh, when uh, Lavrov, Foreign Minister Lavrov, says Russia to respond uh, in proportion to U.S. strike on Syria. Well, what does that mean? Anyway, says Russia has said it will react in proportion to any U.S. military action against Syria on the pretense of preventing a chemical attack. We, we will react with dignity in proportion to a real situation that may take place, said Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov on Wednesday during a press conference. Lavrov added that he hoped the U.S. would not use its intelligence assessments concerning the Syrian government alleged intentions to, few, uh, to further provoke the country. He says, I expect that our own partners in the region, American, European, will also have an open and comprehensible approach aimed at de-escalation through normalization of humanitarian situation, he added. Well, we'll just have to wait and see if, if they follow suit. I don't think they will in the ultimate long run. But it's not just Russia. Also, Iran says uh, U.S. playing with fire in Syria. Sham Khani made this statement himself. Iran's uh, SNSC head uh, Shamkani warned U.S. of consequences if it moves in Syria, saying Washington's unwise and adventurous measures in Syria are a clear example of playing with fire. So it looks like Iran is definitely going to get involved in this war if that were to happen, which of course will turn to a global conflict if it doesn't back down very rapidly. But again, as we've always said too, Iran still is a threat for Israel. As Iran was also putting uh, together doing one of their missile practice launches, it's hard to see, but if you look at the circle here on the screen and behind you there, they drew a Star of David with a bullseye in the middle of it there as they're target practicing for their missiles there, clearly letting us know that Iran, regardless if Israel had anything to do with the takedown of Damascus or not, would target Israel. But unfortunately, I'm afraid that Israel is going to be, no doubt, involved in this. Uh, EU is, of course, extending uh, Russian sanctions. All these things are really on the heels of just not making things better for Russia and giving Russia really no uh, alternative but to respond if they expect to be taken seriously in the world. And speaking of sanctions, are those sanctions really doing any good in the first place? Well, it doesn't look like it, at least on, from the latest coming out from uh, topwar.ru. This Russian article right here sees that uh, President uh, Putin has finally got the upper hand when it looked like that he was failing in getting any foreign loans or any backing for his economy and what he is doing inside of Russia. He come up with a new game plan. The uh, Russian state bank has put up for sale Russian bonds and Western buyers have been buying them up in huge bulk numbers. Billions of dollars by Western investors have bought into the Russian economy in this way, totally going around the sanctions and blowing out the sanctions right out of the water. In fact, also China making a deal with Russia right now worth $10 billion. 
another great boost for the Russian economy, and yet at the same time, uh, keeping the country alive and afloat and moving forward, making it more and more difficult for the U.S. to continue to bullying them around as the way they've been doing. Also, we find another very sad article that came out today. It's, called, it's on www.ad.nl. The article is called CDA Parliament Questions to New Swedish Identity Jihadist. Seems that what we have is that in Sweden, there had a, 150 militants that had gone to fight with ISIS in the Middle East. But when they returned home to Sweden, Sweden takes and changes their identity gives them new passports, new ID, top secret, so no one will know that they were actually part of the jihadist movement fighting with ISIS in the Middle East. It only makes you wonder then, is all the allegations that the U.S. has been involved and other nations that have been involved in arming and helping ISIS that it may very well be true. Now, of course, there are European members that are saying this was wrong for them to do because they're not unable to track these warriors to see where they're going. Well. Who knows? Maybe they are just part of the bigger picture that's being led by the U.S. according to the allegations that the U.S. is the one that arms and funds ISIS from the beginning. Very troubling times. And of course, now we have Amman uh, is reporting an article where the Syrian military has confiscated Israeli armaments left behind by rebels in homes. Uh, they're saying this because on some of the photos that were, uh, that were taken here, of the weapons, including anti-tank missiles and a lot of small arms fire, uh, these photos actually have Israeli, um, Israeli uh, writing on, or Hebrew writing on these packages. We see in this, in this picture right here, uh, an arms uh, box there, an ammo box as it would be called, is actually written in the Hebrew language for uh, 7.62 caliber uh, type rifles that are being fired there. So uh, very troubling to see uh, that, there, that it, it is seeming to show, and this, by the way, uh, these arms were seized uh, in this area here uh, around, uh, let's see, Al Masada News is the one that first reported this. The SSA captured dozens of anti-tank missiles along with tons of ammunition, uh, explosives which had been abandoned by the evacuated Islamist insurgents. Some of the weapons bore Israeli inscriptions and indications that Tel Aviv may have smuggled armaments to opposing, opposition forces in homes. That was Al-Qaeda's fighters, by the way, that they're speaking about, which is troubling because we know that Israel has openly said that they are helping with medical aid for Syrians that are wounded in the battle inside of Syria. And Israel has said that they do not ask or question whether or not they are for the Syrian military or if they are for the opposition, uh, which it's a nice thing to see that, that Israel would be willing to help in a humanitarian way. But could that humanitarian way have been a cover only to be able to give arms to those that are fighting against uh, Bashar al-Assad? And the reason why I bring this up, friends, is because you have to understand the Israeli people, we need peace with our neighbors. We don't need war. And Arming Al-Qaeda or Al-Nusra or any of these groups in the region there is definitely not helping the Israeli people because one thing's for sure, none of these groups like the Jewish people living in Israel at all. So if they end up in power, we will not have peace with them. We might pretend that we will have peace by giving them weapons and by giving them medical supplies. But as I pointed out in our, our article the other day that we put up, 20 and 2010, we saw Bashar al-Assad trying to make a peace agreement with Israel, trying to come up, recognizing Israel as, uh, as a right to exist, and was also trying to work to do the same with Hamas in Gaza. That would have brought a lasting peace for Israel had we taken that road. But instead, no, the very man that we were getting peace with, we decided to take him out and instead arm the very terrorists that hate Israel to begin with and could care less about us and are willing to put women in bondage, burqas, everything else, cover them up, imprison them in their own clothes. This is what we support instead. It really makes no sense. When are we going to truly stand for the Jewish nation? When are we really going to stand and deal with where the biblical passages it says that, uh, it, it, I won't get onto that right now.
I will though today. I, I'm going to go back to that because we're going to get into this Palmyra thing here in just a little bit too, the Ark of Baal. Uh, also, uh, Sputnik News is reporting about Veritas and their uh, new move that they're making. Uh, an a absolutely astounding job that Veritas leader there has uh, made on Project Veritas. He has exposed CNN uh, and how that they're just saying that, like, for example, the news about Russia, well, that's just a big burger. Uh, another uh, CNN executive that actually states that it just helps our ratings to talk about Russia. You know, the thing is, is here we struggle here ourselves. We're not the big CNN or Fox or any of the other medias there. And we get lamb blasted by many people because we try to tell people what is true. And unfortunately, we get thrown under the bus for telling people what is true, but they gobble up everything that CNN does. And you know, CNN is right. It's the ratings. That's why they stay doing it. As long as the people of America will feed on garbage, they're going to give them garbage. If you like feeding on lies, if that's what really motivates you, believe me, CNN will definitely load you up with it. So go and feed. Eat from the garbage can. If you want somebody to tell you the truth, then we'll do our best to tell you the truth. If we make a mistake, I'll gladly come and tell you, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I will do that. I'm not, I'm not here to try to be somebody or, or anything like that. I'm here to just to try to tell you what is true. Also, the Vatican treasurer, uh, according to Sputnik and other outlets already saying that the former archbishop charged with child sex offenses, uh, Cardinal George Pell, he is also, by the way, he's already denied the allegations that this is so uh, but there has been uh, a, a, a case brought against him. Uh, he is uh, also the Secretary of the Economy for the Vatican. Uh, basically, the church treasurer has been charged with multiple sexual offenses by Aust Australian authorities. Cardinal Pell is facing multiple charges, and there are multiple uh, complainants, uh, said Shane Patton, the Deputy Commissioner of the Victoria Police Department during a press conference. Uh, so uh, there again... Nothing new under the sun, especially uh, when we speak to the Vatican. And of course, many other uh, religious organizations deal with the same issue. A lot of pedophilia that goes on and nobody ever does anything about it. Uh, but anyway, he is facing the charges there. This is something we're going to be going into a little bit later tonight. Breaking Israel News is bringing up this article. Many of you are aware of these things, but I am going to go into this from a biblical aspect as well. The Ark of Baal is a New World Order's model for Temple of Darkness in Jerusalem, believes one rabbi. Uh, this is uh, speaking about the Ark of Baal that's been moving around, as many of us know already. I've heard many people do uh, speak about this. They've sent videos to me about the Ark of Baal going into, uh, of course, New York City, uh, London, uh, and as well as Italy, right before the G7 summit. Very interesting that it ends up in Italy at that time there. Uh, what really caught my attention, though, is that the rabbi is quoting from Daniel 7.23, speaking about the fourth kingdom that shall be diverse from all the rest and devours the whole earth. Uh, I had looked at this before, but I hadn't really put two and two together on that. I did know from the beginning that as far as my own concern about this is that Rome was that kingdom. It would be a revived Roman Empire that would devour the entire earth. This is what I believe the fourth kingdom to be to begin with. And of course, the Ark of Baal, uh, I hadn't really thought about it, but as I'm reading, as I read the article here that was, uh, that was done about this by Adam uh, Berkowitz, it really began to make me think about this even more so because the Ark of Baal, of course, was erected in Palmyra, Syria by the Romans over their conquests over Syria, just like they erected the Ark of Titus in Rome for their conquest over Israel. Now, isn't it odd, though, that they're moving this Ark around the world in certain key locations like the United States, like uh, Great Britain, it lets you know that Rome, they send the ark to the places they have conquered. And so when you talk about the king of the north, the hidden king, the Melchizedek, which is literally a hidden, the hidden king is literally what it translates out to be, not just king of the north, but the hidden king, then we realize it is a Roman empire that is conquering the world in this day here. No wonder why they're letting you know who their military powers are conquered and how they obey. More to come later this evening. Definitely stay tuned. Watch. We're going to go into this Ark of Titus uh, and, or of course, excuse me, the Ark of Baal here from Palmyra 
And I just can't help but to, to remind you as the month is closing here, we're getting ready to make this trip to the United States, be speaking there in on August 5th and 6th. We have very limited tickets there at the conference. It will be in Duluth, Georgia. Definitely get your tickets while there's still some left. And, uh, and also, if this type of news broadcasting, prophetic insights that we share with you here, if it is a blessing to you, stand up and support this type of work. If you like CNN better, like to have your ears tickled and want to be lied to, support CNN. I encourage you to do so. But anyway, we'll stay standing with the truth as long as we know how to. I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.